Yo, what is happening everyone? So, uh, basically today is like a different thing which I decided to do. Now, I'm pretty good in the kitchen. Like, I mean, I'm insanely good in the kitchen. I can cook like shrimp pie, I can cook like bolognese. I basically have a friend who thinks she's a pretty good cook, she thinks she's a pretty good chef, and uh, we were talking the other day about uh, uh, baking. Now, I think I can bake, right? I feel like I can bake anything. Baking's not hard, it's all about... Do you know what I heard two things? Apparently cooking is an art. Baking is a science. I was good at science, so therefore I'll be good at baking. So, today for happy hour, I'm going to be hanging out with Tess Ward. She also is late because she's doing her makeup. Because she wants to look pretty for this. It's true, right? You were... I can't believe that. What? You were? You did I was this. early. Shut up, Jamie. I was early. <laughs> right. This is what you do as a chef. You have to kind of be like... Okay, wait, hang on. First of all, I need to find a mixing bowl because I felt like I had one around. So, before. for all of you people who don't know what a mixing bowl is, a mixing bowl is very simple. It's just a bowl that you mix in. Do you know those kind of things? She's... That's a dog bowl. Is that, <laughs> no. is that not That's a mixing bowl. And when I was a kid, my mum used to make a uh, banana cake. Banana bread, banana loaf. So Tess said she's pretty good at banana cake or banana loaf or well, whatever. We know that Jamie's not good at banana bread, so I thought I'd teach him how to make it. There we go, that's the idea. So we're using three bananas here. Three bananas that are looking pretty sad. Very, very ripe. Wait, what's key about this? The blacker, the riper the banana... The riper the banana, the better, better the banana bread. So when you have bananas you don't want to eat anymore and they're overripe. Perfect for this. Tess, go. Wait, so Tess, you have to tell us all. So when did you Mash. first when did you first start realizing that you could cook? Well, I got into it when I was at uni. I had a lot of free time. So when I was hungover, I mean, when I wasn't working. I told you, man. Look at this. I'm not even kidding. There's a bottle of prosecco here right now. She's always drinking. It's a joke. Always drinking. You must. Someone must have taught you how to cook when you were younger. You couldn't just, you don't, no one at uni just basically just suddenly knows how to cook. You have yeah, to but learn I, sta it. I started learning by teaching myself. So I was the weird student that had niche ingredients like vine leaves and pomegranate molasses in my cupboard that I was like chefing around with like a pretentious pond. How could you afford pomegranate things when you were at uni? Because I lived right next to an international supermarket. Oh, uh, okay. It was like one pound. Oh, all right, sure. <laughs> Shut up. Sure. When I was at uni, I was like eating like. Crack Shut up and crack two eggs into that. I was eating like two, I was eating like pasta sauce in order to stay like... So you can set. find the recipe in the description box below. I can crack things really well. Go on then. Okay, what are you going to do? You're going to make a mess, aren't you? No, no, you're going to need the rest of the eggs. There are, there you crack two eggs into the mashed up ripe banana in the mixing bowl. Woo! This get is, you! And you can't get any shell in it. You, look, no, no, no. Can I show you how you can do it? Here you go. I'm trying to find salt. What have I done with the salt? Well, why did you like cooking so much? What happened? So, have you basically started making all these things and just love the kind of like art of it, or what? You just I like think making I love, for people? It's the creativity. I like. It's basically. It's. I don't know. It's quite therapeutic when you're cooking. You're, you know, you're at home, you put your music on, you kind of get in the zone. And then yeah. also, you have this amazing thing that comes out at the end of it and you get to share it with other people so I think cooking for other people is like the ultimate. It's basically like having a baby. Not really, it's it not is. quite as painful. It's, it's, it's like having a baby, you make, you have a wonderful thing with someone and then something comes out at the end that you share with other people. That's like yeah. having a baby. Yeah, okay, right. Well, whatever. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so wait, what are we going to hear? So I'm trying to find the salt. I don't know where the salt has gone. Okay, do you put like a teaspoon in or a spoon? No, 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 you put a... Oh no, I saw you <laughs> spill it. Like, you just spilled it all in there. Okay, so then we have okay. our pre greased loaf tin here. Okay. And can I just mention that all the while we're making this, we're preheating the oven at 180 degrees with a fan. What is your like signature dish? Like, if you have to like cook something, so you basically you invite me for a date, right? You're like, Jamie, come with mine for a date. I'm I love like, that he thinks that it would be a date. No, I'm just making it realistic for everyone because obviously, <laughs> if you said someone else, they probably they wouldn't understand it. So this is just so they can relate. First of all, I never cook for a date because they have to earn it. So I feel like that comes over time and it's a it's a peer, it's a progressional thing. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's basically like being like to a cleaner, yo, first date, clean my house. It's no, it's not someone. at all. That is the most ridiculous thing okay, I've ever heard. Okay, shut up. Right, we're going to get on with the next one. No, hang on, we're not off the this conversation. Yes, but off you, it. No, if you're gonna, if, if you, if someone says to you, hey, you can invite them for dinner, surely you would have a cook for them. I would, but I'm not gonna invite someone who I don't really know as a first date for dinner because also it's a bit, it's an intimate thing. You want to cook for someone that you really like. 
I'm not sure I even like you yet. Right, so we have our flour. I'm using whole grain spelt flour because I prefer it to plain wheat. Spelt flour. And then we're also using sugar. So I'm using like a kind of and just to brown, make sure, brown sugar. Brown sugar. And I'm sorry, I've added that. So what I'm gonna do is add the two dry ingredients together. Are you and sure this is right? It. Yes, I'm sure. I'm absolutely sure. And you're also gonna add some baking powder. With the baking powder, you're not even using like a measuring thing. What do you mean? That's going to be boiling hot. It's an oven. It's an oven. What are you doing? Can't just take it out. It's called asbestos chef hands. I've just put the butter into the oven really briefly in a so ceramic oven proof dish. Do you guys want to agree that if someone asked you on a date or something like that, there was a guy or a girl and they cooked for you, it would be the best thing in the entire world? That's why I feel like... I like I've just weighed that out. That's about a tablespoon of baking powder. If yep. it was your last meal on earth. Right. Okay, and you have to have a start and name and dessert. Yeah, what would I choose? What would you choose? I'm going to have fish tacos in Mexico. Like that, like the location added. Yeah. Okay, sick. Okay, For right. starter, I'm probably going to have some kind of like smoked tuna carpaccio. And then oh alongside God. the fish tacos, I'm also going to have a side of truffle fries with parmesan. No. Because, because it's my last meal on earth and that's amazing. How posh is Tess Ward? Truffle, I mean truffle <laughs> and like you ghost on. cheese. I mean, they all know I'm posh, but hey. I'm a truffle. Foodie. I'm allowed to, it's, it's my job. Right, what do we got here? So basically we have a mixture of cranberries and macadamia nuts, which I've just kind of, they're baked Shall together I crush in the packet. These up? Just the macadamias, I should, I'm kind of separating them out. How are you meant to cut these little ones up like that? Yeah. Just no, you're meant to crush them. No, just, no, you can't with the side of the knife, just do that. Anyway, melted butter's going in. I'm gonna put the cranberries straight in. Yeah, yeah, but I've got roast pochettes and more. <laughs> did you? Oh my god, no, did you? Really. No knives for you. No, look, did Tess, you, I'm you already. Be confident and just like go through look, like that. I was taught by a samurai master, I feel like I know what I'm doing here. Is your hair meant to be in there as well? Yeah, that adds a flavour. That was found in the bowl. Sorry, I'm not wearing a hair net, it doesn't make for such great viewing. Wait, so have you ever worked in the kitchen? Yes, like I have. have. You've worked in the kitchen? Yeah. What is it like? Are the stories all true where the chef is like shouting and people are always it like depends. Hectic? It depends on the kitchen, um, the one I worked in. So everyone always thinks I worked at the Ritz, which is a bit of a weird one because I only worked there for like two days. I just did like a temping thing. But the Harwood Arms has a Michelin star. I did work there. Truffle, okay. And now the Ritz. I'm gonna, I can't decide it fast. So the batter is quite a thick one for banana bread. As you can see, it's kind of pourable, but it's quite thick. So we're now actually going to add that to Okay, wait, so hang on. So let's, let's, let's just re recap on what we've done. So we have, we started with three really ripe black bananas, because that yeah. tastes better, if I got that right. Before we go to that, I'm just going to show you, I'm just going to dust the bottom of the tin of flour like this, and this will help stopping everything, stop everything from sticking. So we've put three ripe bananas in, so we've had that, so <laughs> black banana. After we've done that, then we mash them up in there. We then get butter, we melt the butter, we put the butter in with it to mix around. Yep. We then get how many grams of flour? So it was about 180 grams of flour. 180 grams of flour, yep. and we also get that brown sugar, and we put how much brown sugar in it? Because this is unhealthy. It was about, no, it was about 100. 40, less because the bananas add sweetness to the banana bread. So, so 140, much. and then how much baking soda goes in? I put baking powder. Baking powder. So baking powder is less intense. Baking soda is, you know, you want to use a lot less of that because it's going to make it taste kind of bitter. Um, and you were asking for advice. No, I like the advice. I'm and learning then, as I go. Um, so for the baking, we need an actual spatula for this because otherwise we're okay. going to get that. You can lick that. Wait, hang on, I just want to find out first where we're at. So then, okay, so then so we put that, so the baking powder, because baking soda is a bit more intense. It's the raising agent. It's called the raising agent. You raise me up. You, know, like. you then add, you don't have to add like black currants or the little nut things or stuff. You can just leave it as you, you can. want. You can. Walnuts are the most traditional thing to add to um, uh, banana bread, but I'm not really the biggest Oh my god, have you bread. tried that? Yeah, I have. That is un. And then how many eggs? We put two eggs in there we as well. Two large eggs. Two large eggs. They also help raise it and they help bind it together. So okay, so we have all of this. We have all of this printing. You then dust your your loaf pan. Yeah, no, you grease it with butter and then dust it with with flour, a bit of flour, and it'll stop it from sticking. When we know that, we've also preheated the oven to 170. 180 degrees. 180 degrees. To bake. 
And how long do we put it in the oven for? We're going to give it like 25, 30 minutes. What do we do while we wait? We have 30 minutes. <laughs> I say, oh, oh, and we got the Prosecco. What could we do in 30 minutes? Okay. Sorry, it's just... Right. Ready? Moment of truth. It's definitely cooked now. Oh. Right. Lord. Hi, mummy. Okay, Delish. so what do you get? Yeah, it's definitely cooked. So you want to leave it to rest for like 10 minutes, um, so it cools slightly before you turn it out, and then you can turn it out and cut it and eat it. It's actually better the next day because I like to slice my banana bread and then toast it and then have it with butter and honey. Okay. Weirdly, it's been resting for 10 minutes. This is the blue Peter moment. This is what see, we, we rest in. And so you can see that it's going to This is the easy. scary moment though. This is when you don't actually know. Hold on, we need plates. Don't you? you don't know for what? Well, I don't, I don't know for what. It's going to come out easily. It's going to be burnt or. Look at that! The smell of this is out of control. I mean, I'm just... Jamie, I I'm mean, getting that nostalgic feeling back. This is the new Mary Berry right here. Yeah, and check this out. Okay, fine. That, no, this is the end piece. You don't want the end piece. No, I know, you? but I'm just... Okay, fine. Sorry, the end piece shouldn't be... Okay, we're coming in for both of this. We're trying it, right? This is essential. You can't eat banana bread without tea. Am I right? Am I right? Well, I suppose it is. Okay, here we go. So this is it. The first taste, right? Well, it's not the first taste because you've been eating it <laughs> straight out of the tin. Oh, my God. Dude, that's out of control good. I'm not even kidding you. Mm. Oh, my God. And we used a wholemeal spelt flour. So it's a little bit easier to digest and better for you than if you use regular plain flour. Well, I think so, anyway. Wholemeal's, you know, more fibre. And then also, um, you can use... We use a dark brown sugar and a coconut sugar. I didn't tell you, but we use coconut sugar, so it's even healthier. We use coconut sugar, I knew that. I know all these things. Um, right team, go and do this recipe. Instagram us, tag us in your Instagrams. Tag us in your Instagram, now I'm going to leave Tess's Instagram just below. Yeah. It's basically Tess Ward, very simple. Mm. Um, also going to leave a link to her YouTube channel, which is Tess Ward. Also go and check out her book, The Naked Diet. Mm. And then check out me and Jamie making the ultimate bagels on my channel. So good with bacon, avocado, cream cheese, like Christmas come early. The perfect Christmas breakfast. And if you think you're good at um, making scrambled eggs, trust me, you have no idea the little secret. Thanks, babe. It's Thanks. true, the little secret there is. It's unbelievable. Um, any homies, listen, remember to subscribe, give a big thumbs up to both our channels, and we're gonna do loads more videos together. Yeah, for sure. Stay cooking, kids. It's, what do you mean, stay cooking? It's no, yeah. Hey, uh, that's my saying now. Stay keep, cooking. Keep cooking, kids. Keep cooking, kids with a K. Peace!